Hi everyone, John B. Man Saunders here. I thought I'd show you how I make my own bread. Um, there's two ways of doing the bread that I do. You can buy the, um, the yeast that are in packets. I buy the Allison yeast uh, for my bread. Or you can make your own sourdough yeast. Uh, it's a live product. Uh, it takes a while to uh, grow this, but basically it's just flour and water. And after a while, the flour and water begins to create its own yeast. It becomes live because there's, there's um, yeast in flour and in the atmosphere, the, uh, the bacteria, whatever, it begins to grow yeast. And you just feed it with um, flour each day until in the end, this is all bubbly and completely live. I don't know if the camera could pick it up, but it's the inside it's all foaming and bubbly. It's completely alive and it it smells a little bit sour but it's perfectly good so I won't be using that because I wanted to show you the quick and easy way. Um, I'll get a little bowl. All I do is first of all create the yeast. So I've got two little yeast packets here and just cut the tops off of them. Tip the yeast, that's the dried yeast instead of using my live yeast. This is so that you can do it easily yourself at home. So two packets of dried yeast. Uh, I've got some warm water here. It's about hand warm I should think. Same blood temperature I should think. Uh, put a bit of that in there like that, the water. And then I have some sugar. Ooh, get some sugar, hang on. Some sugar, I forgot the sugar. Put a bit of sugar in there, that helps to feed the yeast. Mix it up, give that a good stir. And um, after about five minutes, you begin to see the yeast um, it's bubbling. It does. It, you know, it's ever so easy to do this. A little bit more water there. there Just rub that in. Stir that in like that. A little bit longer than I thought that bit. I'll show you when it's done. Nearly all stirred in. Right, that's all stirred in, put that there to set. Uh, in a few minutes that would be um, fine. I'll get the flour ready now. So I've got some of these scales here and I'll wait in grams. Put that onto there. Press naught, that'll bring it back to nothing. Yeah, that's ready to go now. Now I've got some Allison, I've got the Allison yeast. I've got some Allison um, seed grain whole meal bread flour. So this is uh, the sort of um, the seedy stuff. Then I've got the Allison strong white flour. So I do half and half. So I do 500 grams of this strong flour. Put that in there. And this has got lots of seeds in it. Basically it's half and half, so that's how I do it anyway. Yeah. That's 501 or 505. That's enough. And I do, I chop it up now for the other to uh, 1000 grams. And that's coming up now. I do it just under 1000 normally because I add a little bit. Let's get a bit of that out. 
because I'll be using some of that when I'm kneading. That's just under a thousand now. There we are, that's the, that's the flour way down. So that's simple, isn't it? Two lots of flour, 500, another 500 making a thousand. Um, so we take that out, we're done with the scales now, we don't need them anymore. Take them away. Um, next job, stir this flour in a little bit with some salt, you know. I'm not too good at measuring, there we are, a bit like that. <laughs> you know, sprinkle of salt like that. So I'm just doing this, this is just an easy, quick, simple method of making your own flour. There's nothing to a flour, bread even. There's, you know, that's my CIDP again, I get all the words mixed up. So you have to forgive me for that. So, um, you just mix that in there like that, so it's mixed the white flour, the strong white flour with the the seed for that, the seed flour, the Allison's uh, seed flour, whatever it is called, uh, seed grain whole meal. That's it. So you mix that with that. I'm always doing this, and it's great because you know I think it all takes about costs about thirty pence to make your loaf, all these loaves of bread. Uh, the thirty pence a loaf, so it's cheaper than cheaper than. Um, buying your bread. So that's the flour. I normally put a little bit of a dip in there like that. And uh, I'll be adding some oil in a minute. I had a little tiny bit of olive oil. Well, a glug glug, not a measure, it's just a glug glug. And a little bit of rapeseed oil. Now this rapeseed oil, which I add, it's got so much flavour with it, because uh, I'm a beekeeper and the bees um, help to produce this oil and so I like to use it in a lot of products and um, a little bit of that in there as well gives it quite a nice flavour and uh, so the yeast gives it good flavour too so that's why the sourdough you can get more of a flavourful bread with your own yeast because you've got just more flavour so um, we've looked now at this uh, yeast and it's got bubbles on the top I don't know if the camera can pick it up but on the top of the yeast there's all bubbles and um, that the um, sugar I put in there is begin to activate the yeast to be, you know to liven it up. So I'll just pour that in the middle like that. It's not it's not like um, rocket science. This you wash that out a little bit so that I've got all the yeast. I'm not wasting any. Yeah, that's all the yeast in there two packets. Now, we've got, now go for the oil. A little bit of ordinary olive oil like that. Glug, glug, glug. Like that. A little bit of this, not too much of the rapeseed, like that. There you are. You can just, just put ordinary olive oil in there, forget the rapeseed if you want. Uh, a bit more water. And what I normally do now with this, is I don't stick my hands in it and get all sticky, I use a spoon. And I'm just I'm just um, sort of stirring it like that because what I want to do now is I want to get all the yeast mixed with the flour um, so it's even consistency with the yeast all the way through. Now this isn't a difficult bit either, this is quite simple, look you just keep stirring with your spoon um, until every little bit is sort of kind of mixed. It's not going to end up as dough yet. It's I'm just mixing the yeast in with all the flour and the salt, making sure that it's evenly distributed. See, you're not, you haven't got any mess yet. You will get a little bit of mess in a minute. Um, and then we'll be kneading it for a little while. And after the kneading, I'll be uh, allowing it to rise for the first rise. I'll show you that. And then you knock it back, and then you have the second rise. It's so simple to make your own bread as long as you've got the time. Well, now I'm retired, I've got the time. So I've got the time to do my beekeeping and I've got the time to do uh, make bread and things like that. I've got, I've got quite a lot of plans. I want to make cheese as well this year. So look at all my videos on the beekeeping and different things. Um, and it's a great little hobby you can have when you're retired. Yeah, we're mixing all that in. Can you see it slowly? Get, it's got little bits uh, 
it's hard to say really, but small pieces mixed. So you know that the yeast is sort of evenly distributed then. That's uh, the first stage, okay? That's that. We've got three dishes there to put the bread in later. Move them over a bit, get them out of the way. Get everything out of the way. Including the yeast. Now then, I've scrubbed my hands. Uh, we're using a scrubber so they're really nice and clean. I've disinfected all the surface here, so just to, you know, that's what I do anyway. A bit of flour, a bit more water in there, like that. Start to now put this extra water in, and uh, you know, I started off with a point there for this a thousand grams of flour mixed with the yeast and a point of nearly a pint of water. Look, and it's just starting now to. Um, and this is where I get this off of here now and I'll start to knead it with my hand. Have a little bit more water and now we're just just pushing the the dried flour into the into any of the liquid with your hands just squeeze it like that. That's easy enough isn't it? As I say nice clean hands, no rings on Scrubby nails. I don't want to be <laughs> putting germs in your bread. It's just a bit more. Look, that's probably almost about it. Look, a point. Uh, I reckon it's almost, almost perfect for that. Sometimes the flour is a little bit drier than other days, and um, so it depends really. But it's almost there now. I might want a little bit more water. I'm not sure. Probably a little bit more. Yeah, just a tiny bit. I have to go off camera a minute, get a bit more water. There you are, a little bit more water there, I think. I like it fairly moist because when I knead it in a minute I put a little bit more flour. Some people don't use any extra flour when they're kneading but you know some people use olive oil to knead but I just do it this way. So anyway this is my way of making the uh, bread so <laughs> it's not everyone's way is it? See it? It's getting there now. That's it. This is now coming to near the end where we're going to be kneading and at this stage I personally wash my hands. Right then, now we're going to go on to the kneading stage. That bit of flour that I saved out of the thousand grams, just put over there like that. That's it, I'll put that on there. Here we go then. This is the kneading bit and it's easy to knead. You just just keep doing that. <laughs> There's nothing to it. Bread is an easy thing in the world to make. Uh, people have been making it for thousands of years. I don't see the point in going down to the shop buying bread. We can make it for 30 pence a loaf and it's uh, so nice. It's unbelievable. And um, of course, don't forget I get my own honey, don't I? Because I've got all them beehives, so you can have homemade bread with honey on it. <laughs> so, what more do you want in life other than uh, a nice wife like I've got? Let me have a bit more flour on there now. You know, you've got to be careful not to do too much. See, that's why I had it a little bit wet, a little bit wet, because, um, see, this, that's what you do, push down like that, over, flap it over. Trapping in the air, you're trapping in the air, pushing it over. See, the reason I add it <coughs> damp is because I'm putting the extra bit of flour on. But people say you've got to knead it for 10 minutes. <coughs> I've never really done that, I only do it for about 5 minutes because it always seems to be enough to me. So, why do it for 10 when you can do it for 5? <laughs> And it's always light and fluffy and got air holes in it so and it always rises so 
that yeast, that Allison yeast, is actually quite good stuff. But you know, I do prefer my own yeast, the the sourdough yeast that I grow. It's actually got a name, the yeast, as I call it George. <laughs> so each day I'll say, I've got to go out and feed George, and I'll feed George some couple of three spoons of flour and two spoons of water. Water them doesn't come out of a tap, it's out of a bottle and um, it's the same weight of water to the same weight of flour that's to feed the yeast and after about 12 days you'll have some really good live yeast and you can use that and keep topping it up and use it and topping it up I'll have to do another I'll have to do another video on making the yeast, why not? making the live yeast so there we are, we're, we're kneading away, look, see, it's, it's coming now, it's quite hard because I've got a lot of um, seeds in this bread, so it's quite, um, <clears throat> it's quite hard on your shoulders and that, but this is all you have to do to knead it, you haven't got to be a special kneader or special at something to do this, keep doing that, look. It's a bit tiring, <laughs> but I'll get three loaves of bread out of this. I don't know, it is about 30p a loaf, and uh, I think it's probably worth £2 a loaf, really. It's so good, you know. See, look, we've run out of flour now, well, practically. I'll put a little bit more in there. That's the the thousand grams of flour. Okay. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Nearly done. a little bit in there so it don't stick around the bowl yeah yeah that's that's enough that will rise I normally try to get it so it's in a bit of a ball shape like that nice ball we put that in there like that now I'll get a bit of cling film put over the top keeps the damp in three loads of bread out of this and uh, how long has that took me? 10 minutes to prepare that that's all the hard work done now the rest of it's easy all I've got to do now is uh, leave it to rise there we are there's the bread it's um, sitting on the sideboard next to the log fire um, I think I found that the heat from the fire or this nice warm cosy ambience of heat seems to help the bread to rise but if you haven't got a log fire you can put it in your airing cupboard or just as long as it's not in a cold place and um, people do put it in the fridge actually but um, I find myself personally it rises nicer when you put it near the log fire or you got it in the warmth so um, we wait here now for about 45 minutes and that should rise a certain amount and then we can knock it back and I'll show you how to do that and then we leave it for the second rise in the bread tins which takes about an hour and a half to two hours then it, we pop it in an oven at 200 for 30 minutes it's um, the oven is a fan assisted oven if you haven't got one of them it's 220 
So there we are, we'll look at it in a short while. There we are, that's after 45 minutes. You can see how much it's risen. It's right to the top of the nearly touching the cling film. There we are. Um, all we've got to do now is we've got it to that stage where it's put the jump on actually. But it's um and it's first rise, we've got to knock it back now. Knocking back's easy. We just do that, look, look at that, all the air coming out of it. It's risen, isn't it? A lot, puff right up, full of air. See that yeast works really well, and then we just take it out in one lump, like that. One lump, put that on the bench. Now we're going to roll it in one sausage. A sausage like that. There we are. It's about equal, I reckon. Simple as, and cut it into three. That's about equal. Say one, two, three, about like that, I think. Yeah, that's equal. There we are. We'll put that one in there, look. Probably roll it a bit more, that to fit the tin. I'll make it a bit longer. Fit the tin there. That one's all right. There we are. That's the three done. Now we go and place them by the fire again to do the second rise. Next to the fire again, what I should have done, was just in the kitchen, was just put some cuts in the top of the bread. Two little cuts like that in the dough. Because it'll rise and it'll help it to um, rise just for a little cut through like that simple as little cuts little cuts in the dough there we are We've got little cuts in there like that we'll leave them on there now to rise and uh, do their own thing okay simple body fire there there's the bread after an hour and a half rising in the bread tins and I should now put them in the oven at 200 whatever that is Celsius I don't know just 200 anyway on the oven a fan assisted oven and here we go I've got a pan of water there to put in the oven small pan there filled with water that'll go on the bottom shelf and the loaves on the top that gives some steam helps with the cooking process. Here we are then. Time to get the bread out of the oven. Let's see how we got on. Ooh, hot. Hot, hot, hot. Let's, um, this is the test what we can Tip the bread up, give it a little tap, and I can tell it's not quite cooked. And at this stage, when it's like that, it's not quite done. I'll put it in the oven without the tin. They're all going to be the same. It's not quite cooked at the bottom. That's almost. This one's going to come out. It did. Actually, that one. 
feet. It's almost cooked, you know. Not long now. Just maybe two more minutes. And while we're waiting for that to finish off, <coughs> what good idea is to have one of these. This is called um, Hop House Lager. <laughs> so I normally celebrate myself by uh, having one of these. Um, the yeast, the, my yeast that I call George, and I top it up each day and look after it. If you look, it's got full of bubbles. The whole thing there is bubbles. When you lift that up, it's completely alive with bubbles. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Look at it. That's a beautiful, yeah, sourdough yeast. So it's doing really well, George. But while we're waiting, we just have a, a small glass of this delicious hop house lager to celebrate my um, bread making. Cheers everyone. Mmm, that's really delicious. Pulse lager. There we are then, we're, we're having a little look, see how we're getting on this time. That's after a couple of minutes. Yep, nicely done. Perfect. In the difference in the sound. There we are. Three lovely loaves of bread. Cost us <coughs> 30p each. <laughs> Cheers everyone. <coughs> right, everyone. Thought I'd do the taste test. Right, the bread is, listen, nice and crispy. It feels quite light and when we cut now we cut through and see what we see what we have inside. Right, there we are. Very very small holes everywhere, very light. It's not it's not all heavy. It has got air in it. Now we cut it. There's a cut of the bread, and um, look at that, it's light, all the holes in it everywhere, very light, so there we are, and uh, now comes the taste test, now, I'm not going to make it up, I'm going to tell you what it tastes like, it's got to be, <clears throat> it's got to be the truth, well, it's very slightly uh, warm still, only slightly, a nice bit of little butter on there, look. A bit of butter on your bread. There we are. I'll be, I'll be um, posh and I'll cut it in half. Put that on there, on the plate. There we are, the taste test, ready? Um, look how nice it looks. Beautiful, 30 pence. Now the taste test and the truth of it. Not making it up, it's beautiful. So much better than shop bought bread. The taste is um it's um inside it's all squidgy and light and the crust is crunchy and you can taste all the seeds in the flour. It's um and you can also taste a delicate um hint of the all all seed rape that I put in. Mmm. Mm. You must bake one of these bread loaves and um, maybe somehow send for some of my honey to put on it because um, it's so beautiful 
and the honey's beautiful as well. Can't wait. I haven't got any at the moment because I always wait to the season for I put the honey on the bed. I don't buy it from shops or anything. I use all my own honey and it's beautiful waiting until April when it my first batch comes in. So a real thanks for watching and I hope it was a slightly informative to you and um, please watch my other videos and like and subscribe. Bye now from John B. Man Saunders.